Okay, this is the skin lab, and this is specifically an overview of the two skin models, this one here and this one here. So first, the two general layers of the skin is the epidermis that you see here, epidermis from the superficial to deep, and the dermis from here all the way down to the yellow here. The third layer is not part of the skin. Here is the hypodermis. So the hypodermis is dominated by adipose tissue, as you see here in yellow. So there are only two general layers of the skin, two general layers, the epidermis and the dermis down to here, epidermis and dermis. The hypodermis does not belong to the skin. You got thick skin, as you see here, and you have thin skin. Thick skin represented here, thin skin. All the rest of this is thin skin. Five layers of epidermis in the thick skin, four layers of the epidermis in thin skin. Stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, you see here in peach, stratum spinosum, eight to 10 layers, and then one single layer, this is your stratum basal. In thin skin, you have just four layers of epidermis, stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basal. The thin skin is missing this stratum lucidum that you see here in white. You notice in, you notice these fingers reaching up into the epidermis. These fingers are called dermal papilla. This is how you when looking in a microscope, can orient, your, orient yourself when looking through a microscope and trying to figure out, okay, what layer am I, what, what exactly am I looking at? You look for this wavy line, and whatever is above is epidermis, and whatever is below is dermis. We have three types of glands. We have two sweat glands, this one here and this one here, and you have one oil gland. The oil gland is called the sebaceous gland. It's generally filled in, filled in with pink when looking through the microscope. This is your sebaceous gland. And it's always attached to the hair, to the hair follicle, sebaceous. The two sweat glands you see here, here, this one here is the same as this one, is the same as this one. These are three eccrine. These are called eccrine. Eccrine are never attached to the hair follicle. Eccrine never attached to the hair follicle. But this large one is attached to the hair follicle, and it, it, it looks, in general, looks the same shape. You got like this tube kind of wrapped around and knotted, like this one here. It's just significantly larger, and the, the ducts themselves are significantly larger too. They're, they're thicker in diameter. This is your apocrine, apocrine. In lecture, I'll ask for location. You'll have to know location. In lab, just what is this gland, what is this gland, what is this gland? This is sebaceous, oil gland. This is eccrine, sweat gland. This is apocrine, sweat gland. The apocrine is found only in the smelly areas. The axilla, which is the armpit, also the groin, the anus, the smelly areas. Eccrine is found all over the body, but again, never attached to hair follicles. They can be next to hair follicles. For example, the back of the, 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 back of the hand, you can still have eccrine. And sebaceous oil glands are always attached to hair follicles all over the body. You also, so, so now, now that we're talking about this hair follicle, this dark brown that you see, this is called the hair root, inside the skin. If it's outside of the body, it's called the hair shaft. So you have hair shaft over here, hair shaft. Here's hair root. This outer shell, this outer orange shell that you see here, this is the, the hair follicle. So you got the hair follicle, the hair root, the hair shaft, this expanded end that you see here is your hair bulb, hair bulb. And finally, every hair 
has one of these muscles attached to it. This is the erector pili muscle. Erector pili starts with the letter A. When this thing contracts, it shortens, creates a little belly, creates a belly here, an ex expanded uh, piece here. And because this, is, this becomes expanded, it creates a, a, a goose bump on the top on, on the top of your skin. It creates a goose bump. And it, the, the idea of this is that it stands this hair erect for more insulation, for greater insulation. Instead of the hair being laid down flat, it's, it stands upright for more in, insulation. And it can also squeeze on the sebaceous glands and squeeze some oil out onto the surface of the skin. That's your erector pili. We have in the nerves, uh, in the nervous, the nervous system is also here. These are your nerve endings here. You have uh, uh, nerve receptors, <coughs> sensory receptors, deep down in the dermis, and in and at the top of your dermis, deep at the bottom of your dermis and at the top of your dermis. These are piscinian, these onion-looking things, layered-looking things, are deep. You have one, two, three, four, five here. These are your piscinian corpuscle, piscinian corpuscle, and because they're deep, they sense deep pressure and vibration. Your Meissner's corpuscle are these two right here, Meissner's corpuscle, and because they are up high, up much more superficial than these, these sense light touch. So you have light touch, Meissner's corpuscle, and deep pressure and vibration. These are your Piscinian corpuscle. The dermis is vascular. You see you have arterioles, venules, arterioles, sorry, arterioles, venules, arterioles and venules, you have capillaries here. The dermis is vascular. The epidermis is avascular. There is no blood supply up here. So is the dermis vascular? Yes. Is the epidermis vascular? No. Is the skin vascular? You would say yes. The skin is vascular because the dermis of the skin is vascular. You've got your arterioles, your venules, and your capillary. Here's your capillary bed here. The dermis is, can also be subdivided into two more layers, just like the epidermis can be divided into five or four layers. The dermis can be divided into two more layers. You have the top one-fifth layer and the bottom four-fifths. Top one-fifth and the bottom four-fifths. The top one-fifth is your papillary layer. Papillary layer coming from fingers. That's your top one-fifth. Papillary layer made out of areolar connective tissue. And the bottom four-fifths is your reticular layer. It's, the, it's a sub-layer called reticular layer of the dermis made out of dense irregular connective tissue. P-A-R-D, papillary layer made out of areolar connective tissue and your reticular layer made out of dense irregular connective tissue. Okay, and then your hypodermis is dominated by, or your subcutaneous layer is dominated by adipose tissue. Okay, this, this model here is, is very similar. Um, you might see this on a, on, a, on a lab practical. So we'll just go through these one more t uh, again. We have here the thick skin. You have your stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and your stratum basal, which is one single layer. Thin skin, thick skin. This is your hair shaft, hair root, hair follicle, hair bulb, just the expanded end, your sebaceous gland, sebaceous gland, here, this large one here is your uh, is your um, um, apocrine sweat gland, apocrine sweat gland, attached to a hair follicle. 
sebaceous attached to hair follicle, but your eccrin are never attached to hair follicles. Eccrin, eccrin, smaller. Smaller tubes. Piscinian corpuscle, way, way over here. Here's your, here's three, four Meissner's, five, six Meissner corpuscle here. Meissner's corpuscle. You can see here your um, dermal, dermal papilla. Fingers, dermal papilla. The dermis made out of the papillary layer and the reticular layer. Areolar connective tissue and dense irregular con connective tissue. The hypodermis is below the skin, not a part of the skin, below the skin. Erector pili, arterial venule capillary bed, and that seemed to be just about it.